Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Vacation Bible School through Good Shepherd Lutheran Church. We're going to talk about what it means to build God's kingdom together. And we start out right here at the baptismal font, where when someone comes to be a part of a congregation, we pour water over their head in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and we make some promises together with them. The first of those promises is the one we're going to talk about this week, and that is to live among God's faithful people. So to build God's kingdom, the first step is to gather with other people who believe in Jesus, who believe in God. So what does that mean? Let's find out. So I'm sitting here on the chancel steps, the part of the church where the altar is, that whole area is called the chancel. And I'm sitting here because this is normally where we gather when we have Sunday morning worship and the kids are all together. Now I know a lot of you aren't able to come to church because it's just not safe right now for big groups of people to gather. And so some people are very wisely deciding to have church at home using the computer, just like we kind of are right now. And actually, when the first Christians started to gather, they hadn't built church buildings yet there were no big churches for people to gather in at all. So where do you think people gathered? Yes, they gathered in their homes. And so the first churches were just groups of Christians who got together in people's homes. And they got together to read the scriptures and to sing songs and to break bread together. We'll talk about that next week um, in communion and they got together to learn about who God is and about how much God loves us. When they did those things, when they got together and heard about Jesus and felt the Holy Spirit making their lives full of joy, they naturally wanted to share that love with other people. So let's hear a story from the Bible, from the fourth chapter of Acts, that talks about how those early Christians got together. And in this Bible, this section is called the early believers. I'll start out by showing you a picture. This is from the world Bible that we use for Sunday school. The first Christians were believers who started forming church families. Men and women, boys and girls were all eager to learn about Jesus together. Jesus wants us to love one another, one believer said. He said we should love others like God loves us. The people in the church family nodded. They worked hard to show love to everyone. What about sharing? A little boy asked. Jesus taught us to share everything, said an older man. He told his followers to share with people in need. What could we share? A woman asked. Hmm, the believers shared with each other, and now they looked for ways that they could share with people outside their church family. A little boy ran into the room holding a pair of sandals. These are too small for me. We can share them with another boy. A young girl held out a small bundle. We baked bread this morning. We can share with someone who is hungry. A man laid a hammer and nails on a table. We have tools for building. We can share with people who need to fix things. And there's a question in this Bible that says, who do you know who shares? The believers, those first Christians, gave away all kinds of things, clothing and food and money too. Every believer found something important to share inside and outside their church family. And the book of Acts tells us that when the people got together, they were full of joy and they loved being able to share their blessings with other people. And because they did that, more and more people started to join their group of believers and learn about Jesus and how Jesus had died and was raised and was alive in their hearts through the power of the Holy Spirit. Other people wanted to be a part of that. So let's take a tour of the church today to talk about different ways that we share 
and different ways that this building reflects the love of God. So welcome to Good Shepherd Lutheran Church. This is the front door of our church building, but most of the time when we come to church, we actually walk in through the side door. So let's head that way. As we do, I want to show you a couple things. See that stone that says 1971? That's when this church was, this part of the church was first built. Seems like a long time ago to some people and not very long ago at all to other people. So this is the way a lot of us come in. We park in the parking lot and we come in, but I wanted to show you these things too. Here's our little library, our little free library, and our blessing box. Oop, and I can see that some people have already been to get some of the things out of the blessing box. It was more full before. Here's our community garden. And so all the food in the garden that grows there, the lettuce and the tomatoes and the peas, and then any food that gets put into the blessing box, those are way that, ways that we reach out, just like in the story we read from the fourth chapter of Acts. We love to share here at Good Shepherd, and so one of the things we share is food with people who might not have enough, and so they can just come take what they need. And here's our beautiful meditation garden space, a place where people can come and feel safe and where they can pray. Let's go on in. So welcome to Good Shepherd. We're in the entryway of the church, which is called the Narthex. And this is where we have our baptismal font where we got started. And as you come into any church, usually everything looks at the altar. That's the main focus. And that's where we, it's like the table in your kitchen where you gather for all of your meals. It's really the most important part of the church. And that's where we share in the Lord's Supper, in communion, which we'll talk about next week. So that area up there is the chancel area with the altar. And of course, there's a beautiful stained glass window behind and the cross. These are called pews where everybody sits. And if you look up at the ceiling, it might remind you of the bottom of a great big ship or boat. And for that reason, the part of the church where everybody sits is called the nave. Now remember how we heard in Acts chapter 4 that God's people really enjoyed being joyful together and singing lots of songs. Another super important part of a church is the place where... So here's a close-up of where the music happens. There's Miss Kim's piano bench and Miss Betty's organ. Let's take a look at what the organ looks like from the other side. It has so many keys. Wow. I know it takes a lot of skill to play that. And then on the other side of the music area are Mr. Tom's drums. I challenge you to see if you can find Peter Bear somewhere in the church. This part of the church is called the pulpit. And we have a Bible there that sometimes I will read from or other people will read from and we talk about the scriptures sometimes from the pulpit. Back to the beginning. Thank you for coming with me on this tour of Good Shepherd Church. Hello everyone. Welcome to the craft part of Vacation Bible School for this first week. So this first week we've been talking about the first baptismal promise to live among God's faithful people. And so our crafts for this week, if you will get them out of your packet, you're going to need from inside the week five packet, you're gonna need your um, Sharpie markers. So take out those beautiful Sharpie markers that are gonna be really great for drawing on wood and things like that. 
You're also going to need the week one pack, which has a, a foam cross and some other things inside. And then the other thing that I got for week one is a picture frame and some gems. So get those out of your packet, as well as the tacky glue. You can do these in any order you want to and take as long as you like. But I wanted to show you first how to put the foam cross together. So here's the instructions. You can use that as a guide. And here is the base. So you want to poke out the little parts of the base that need to be poked out. And then put the background in. Just a matter of sliding it into place in the slot. And the cross can go in the middle. Then there are two construction related things. This part, and I'll show you where to put them in a moment. And this part that says my firm foundation, or my foundation is firm in Jesus. So we'll stick those in the frame. Then this bright yellow part has a jackhammer, which people doing construction use to break up rock or concrete. And that goes right here. Whoops. Actually, that gets stuck on, onto the jackhammer type shape on the left side of the cross. So if you peel off the sticky part, you can stick that right on there. And then the other sticky thing is this construction helmet, which people use to keep their head safe when things are falling. And stick that right there where it says, my foundation is firm in Jesus. So that's the foam cross project. The cross is made to look like steel girders that we might use to hold up a building. So we know that every part of our life is built, constructed on the firm foundation of God's love for us. God promises to always take care of us. The picture frame project is a reminder of how important each person is in this church family, in every church family. And so I invite you to either print out or draw a picture of yourself and put that in the center after you peel off the plastic. And then you can decorate it with these gemstones uh, using the glue to glue them on, or use your markers to color the frame as well. If you want, you could always write some things on the picture frame like, God loves me, I'm special. Things to remind you just how much God loves you. Now, God's love for you will never, ever, ever change. There's nothing that you could do to make God not love you so, so much. And so we rejoice in that. Welcome to Vacation Bible School Week 1. I hope you have fun with your crafts. If you have any questions, just call. My phone number is 540-660-9041. If you have any questions, call or text. See you next week. Bye-bye.